Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Let us say together, Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you know that we have no power of ourselves to help ourselves. Keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. First reading is from Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 through 17. God spoke all these words to Moses on Mount Sinai. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that is on the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the iniquity of parents to the third and the fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord, your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you, your son, or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock, or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother, so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God has given you. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor, you shall not covet your neighbor's house, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or male or female slave, or ox, or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Here ends the first reading. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Psalm for today is Psalm 19, and we'll read this together. The heavens Let's declare the glory, the glory of God, and the, the firmament shows his handiwork. One day it tells its tale to another, and, and one night imparts knowledge to another. another. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard, their sound has gone out into all lands, and their message to the ends of the world. In the deep, as he said, a pavilion of the sun, it comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes forth from the uttermost edge of the heavens, and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the innocent. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean. Endures forever. The judgment.
judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold, sweeter far from heaven than honey in the comb. By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can tell how often we offend? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be bold and sad, and innocent of great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. The second reading for today is 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. The message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will destroy. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the deputy? debater of this age. Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are the call, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Here ends the second reading.
there, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple, he found the people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, Take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, the Lord Christ. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. The story of the cleansing of the temple is found in all four of the Gospels, but John, which is quite unique as Gospels go because he's really writing more a theology of who Jesus is than a chronology of what Jesus did and when he did it, he places this at the very beginning of Jesus' ministry in chapter 2. Um, right after his first miracle of changing water into wine, Jesus goes and cleanses the temple. Well, we know that it's probable that the Synoptic Gospels are correct in placing it at the end of Jesus' ministry, because it does seem to be that which causes both the Roman authorities and the Jewish authorities to be upset with him because of his civil dis disobedience. You see, those persons who were in the temple, the people who changed coins and the people who were selling were all franchised by the Romans. So this wasn't just a crime against the temple, it was a crime against Rome. But in any event, today we need to think of it with John's eyes, because that's far from what John has intended for us to be thinking about in the cleansing of the temple. Just two chapters beyond this, Jesus will say to the woman from Samaria at the well, he will say, people won't be worshiping in the temple or on this holy mountain Instead, they will worship God in spirit and in truth. Jesus cleanses the temple in John at the beginning of his ministry because that's precisely what he is about, is bringing cleansing and being very clear about what religion consists of, what we should be doing, and how God works in us. Christianity is, after all, a lived religion. It's not primarily what we think about God, but what we do because we have heard the word of God and it has transformed us. It's a religion of what we do in response to God's love for us. And we do it together, even though over this long pandemic year, most of us have been apart from one another. The reality is we need each other to be Christians. No one can bear the light of Christ to the world alone. But together, by pooling our talents and compensating for each other's weaknesses, we have this opportunity to be agents for difference. And that's what Jesus is calling us to do, is to do some house cleaning in our own temple. 
Paul tells us that you and I are temples of the Holy Spirit. That's the place where, especially in Lent, we have an opportunity to do some house cleaning, to overchange or overturn some things, and to throw out some things. These can mean a variety of different things. This particular lesson today is supported in the Exodus chapter by the Ten Commandments. And that's very fitting because, in a sense, what the cleansing of the temple means is get back to basics. Get rid of all the things that distract you in your religious life and instead get to the heart of the matter. And so the Ten Commandments is a very good start. And of course, we would want to add Jesus's compilation of the great commandment, you shall love God and your neighbor as yourself. These are important basics. But these are, in fact, the basics of our faith. We don't need a lot else besides these things to guide us, to let us know that we are called to be agents of love in God's world. So in this Lent, we need to ask such questions as, what is distracting me from being able to really worship God by the giving of myself and the sharing of love? Showing our love for other persons in a very neighborly way is very easy. But sharing that love in a wider concern, I mean, all of us respond to local needs. And that's wonderful, and it's good that we do it. But there are lots of needs beyond the local. There are lots of people hurting who we pass perhaps each day, or perhaps just only occasionally in the supermarket or in various other places where our life takes us, people who we might be able to reach out to, to be a word of encouragement or a word of um, consolation. I find myself, even in the city of Baltimore these days, going out of my way since, because of my wife's arthritis, I did the grocery shopping, so um, it's not my favorite thing. But I, because I'm an extrovert, I enjoy getting to the cash register. And uh, there I almost inevitably engage the person in conversation, whether I have used that person before or know them or anything about them. And I find that it is usually perceived as a welcome relief from what is otherwise a tiresome job of standing and scanning all day. But there are things to be learned, people's pains. It's amazing what people will tell you and how they will confide in you. And I'm not wearing clericals when I do this. Um, just a word of encouragement, a word of hello, I'm interested in you, I care about you. These are things that are extremely important in our culture and particularly in our society. Today, Jesus drives out the distractions. So where are the distractions in your own life? Perhaps you're too busy, or perhaps you are feeling depressed in this time. You are not alone. You are among those who have found this time to be most difficult. Or perhaps you are avoiding facing something unpleasant. Lent is a good time to face into these things, to see what needs to be thrown out, or at least pushed to the back burner instead of occupying so much time. What prevents you from reaching out in love? The kind of shyness that maybe you'll be rebuffed, or a sense that, um, uh, this person might not appreciate it. I urge you to try. Uh, even in strange circumstances, you may find that there are a lot of needy people there, needing someone just to talk to for a moment, just to give a word of encouragement, just to express some concern about them in their job. What prevents you from standing up for what is right? for taking on someone who may be lying or saying something that is particularly racially or socioeconomically or in other ways disturbing, someone who has prejudices and is letting them all hang out. What prevents us from speaking up 
and expressing at least that this is not the way in which I interpret God's call to us to act. Usually it's fear, it's fear that that other person will dislike us or that it will lead to conflict. These things are important. Things that we need to throw out, things that we need to overturn. Some thoughts for this week ahead, this third week in Lent. Where is God calling you to cleanse the temple and to get out there and to be a more loving, positive influence on all who come in contact with you. Amen. Please stand as we say together the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, God the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We have acknowledged one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We declare to the people for number four, let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. God, the people of this land and of all the nations, in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with others, and grant that we may serve Christ in them, and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Remembering especially Sue, Larry, David, comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people 
In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Thank you all. for us here at St. Luke's, obviously. We have Bishop Eloth with us, and it is, it is a joy to be able to, to have this special day and have him bless us with his, his words and with his presence. Did you want to say anything? Well, you? yes, just to say I'm, I'm delighted to be back. It's been many years since I've been at St. Luke's, but I am now in my second year back um, assisting in the Diocese of Maryland, which gives me great joy to be working with Bishop Sutton, who is my successor. But I've had many happy moments here um, at St. Luke's uh, over the 12 years that I was Bishop of the Diocese. So it's particularly nice to be back. And I remember how moved I was my first experience here, which would have been 26 years ago. I was here for St. Luke's Day. And it was a beautiful sunny day like this. Um, and I looked around and I realized over the years how things have changed in this place. And I was particularly moved by realizing that this was a hospital, both a Confederate and a Union hospital in its various times during the Civil War. And this was a place that saw great pain and great anguish and great consternation and yet isn't it wonderful that it's named after St. Luke? We know that St. Luke probably wasn't a physician, but he's come down, mythologically at least, as being a physician. And here we are in St. Luke's, a place that has healed a lot of people over many, many years, and specifically did that medically um, quite a long time ago during the Civil War. But it's, it's a beautiful church, it's a lovely community, and it's a joy to be back here. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, and I, I agree with everything you said about what a wonderful community this is. And truly, I find healing every time I walk into the sanctuary and see see our beautiful stained glass. There's just something that that I find so comforting in that. So, you know, we, we were able to have a few <clears throat> extra people with us here today that are participating in the service, which makes it a joy. And as I told you before, we are targeting to reopen is Palm Sunday. So that's um, three weeks from today. So we're very excited about that. We have already gotten permission from the diocese to regather on that day. So looking forward to having everyone here on that day. Of course, we'll still be practicing the same safe protocols of, of social distancing and wearing our masks and doing all of all those things. But I encourage you, get your vaccinations as soon as possible. That will make it um, more safe for us to come back. And we will also be having the windows open as we regather. So be prepared for that. It may be a bit chilly and, and so, so you want to be prepared for that as well. But looking forward to 
to welcoming everybody back into this beautiful space and worshiping together. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself as an offering and sacrifice for the world. Yours, O oh Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty, for all that is in the heaven and the earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, and you are exalted as head above all. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. You bid your faithful people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy the Paschal Feast, that fervent in prayer and in works of mercy and renewed by your word and sacraments, they may come to the fullness of grace which you have prepared for those who love you. Therefore, we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 Lord God of might of God. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, 
a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. And therefore, let us seek the peace. Let us say together on page nine of the bulletin. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you in the sacrament of your body and blood, come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you, and you in me, and in the life, and in this life to come. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of our Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Look mercifully on your family, almighty God, that by your great goodness you may be 
we may be governed and preserved evermore. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always.